Hey, hey, this is His Word Unveiled. We are in the book of Leviticus. Thank you so much for being here, for choosing to hit the play button and walk through more of Leviticus with me. This has been such a journey. Um, this whole idea of Leviticus being so powerfully applicable and, and just changing me and doing some crazy new things in me is, is um, it's pretty special. That's totally what it is. So, um, another day, another, um, another chapter, actually two chapters that we're going to hit today in Leviticus. So thank you for joining me again. Um, today's reading will be Leviticus chapters 21 and 22. So let's get this thing started. Um, go ahead and do your reading, meet with the Lord and reading Leviticus chapters 21 and 22. Don't skip over everything. Be so intentional again, so purposeful because Everything in the Word holds so much power and so much truth. So don't miss it. Don't jump ahead. Um, just read nice and slow. Make sure you are listening to the Lord and read to learn. Go do that. I'm praying. Let's get this thing started. Father, we thank you. Um, we invite you here with us to just be and to pour out and to speak and to move. And I pray that you just invade in our thoughts and our hearts and you just um, place us, just move us around, shift things, tweak things up, just keep us focused. Um, bring things to our understanding, just to mind, just um, give us those aha moments today. Um, just speak and, and do whatever it takes and, and just moving things around within us, within our hearts and our minds, so that we're prepared, so that we are just ready to hear you, to be moved by your truth and changed by your truth. Lord, be here today and be um, just who you are. We need you today. We invite you here. We invite you, your presence, um, your truth to just be over this moment, to be over this time that we meet with you. Father, we anticipate and expect you to, to do some crazy new things in us today. We give you permission. We open ourselves up and just say, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Leviticus chapter 21. Actually, before we jump into that, let's do a little recapping in our last chapter. So Leviticus 20, our last video, um, we hit, so this chapter was all on being set apart. So made to, made to be set apart from, um, from the rest of the world, from their input, from what they are doing, that we are set apart from that to the Lord. Um, and also being able to experience those blessings that are set apart for those who are being obedient and who are following the Lord. Um, let's do just a quick refresher on, on verse 24. This is so good. Um, so this is Leviticus chapter 20, verse 24. Chapter 20, verse 24. Hence I have said to you, you are to possess their land, and I myself will give it to you to possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has separated you from the peoples. So he says you are to possess their land. So he is giving the Israelites, he's saying, look, this is their land that they have, but I'm giving this to you. This is going to be yours. So he says they're there on this land, but this is going to be your land and you're going to be separated from the people. So you would think in this that, that, um, the Lord is bringing you to the people and just giving you authority, giving you ownership over this land with them there. But he's saying, no, this land that's theirs, I'm giving it to you and you're going to be separated from the people. So, so these people, I am moving them out and I am moving you in. So good. So clear. This, this I'm taking, I'm removing, I'm replacing them with you. They're going to be gone. There's going to be this separation. You own this land. They're going to be out of that land. Um, so good. So separated from the peoples um, to, to God, to God himself. Again, we see in verse 26, thus you are to be holy to me for I, the Lord, am holy. And I have set you apart from the people to be mine. Um, we just see this, this covenant, this drawing in, this reminding, this reassuring, like this is what I'm doing. That This is what I'm doing, pulling you out, 
to pull you in, to draw you in to who he is. So, okay, jumping into them, um, chapter 21. This is talking the holy priest. So in Leviticus, I've hit, um, just started this off with making sure we know who this is written to, who the Lord is speaking to. So in verse 21, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests the sons of Aaron, and say to them. So not to Aaron, but he's speaking to the priests, to the sons of Aaron. And he is laying out all of these very specific things and holding the priests to a higher standard than the people. Now we just read in chapter 20 about all of these things that the people were to do and were not to do, were to refrain from because it would defile them. And the people were just, all of this was laid out, like don't do this or you're going to get caught up in sin. Don't do this or it's going to ensnare snare you. Don't do this or it's going to defile you. Don't do this. This is a detestable thing. This is wrong. This will make you unclean. Um, laying it out for the people. And now in verse or chapter 21, we see this laid out for the priests and what they are not to do. Um, not to defile themselves around a dead person. Um, just things like that and, and how they are to act. How um, What makes them unclean? What makes them clean? Not to um, to be bald, not to shave the edge of their beards, not to make their hair be just raveled in a mess. Um, uh, let's see, verse 7, they shall not take a woman who is profaned by harlotry. So even in their relations, their relationships, that they are leaders, and he is speaking to leaders, hey, your standard, you know, th this is for real, like you can't, you can't take this lightly. And though he laid out the relationship, um, relationship issues and the sexual purity to the congregation of Israel, he's speaking specifically to the priests now and saying, hey, this is you and this is this is how, you know, this is how you are to act and this is how you are to speak and this is how you are to look and, and all of these things where he's saying your standard is higher. I have given you more responsibility. I have given you more, um, more than the average person of things to do, of things to to um, be more aware of that, that you are in leadership position and that you cannot take that lightly. Um, verse 8, we see, You shall consecrate him, therefore, for he offers the food of your God. He shall be holy to you, for I, the Lord, who sanctifies you, am holy. So he's saying, look, these people are bringing, you know, the congregation of Israel, they're going to be bringing offerings, but you are going to be dealing with these offerings. You are going to be offering them to me and dealing with this food that becomes holy, that will be a part of this um, sanctifying the people. So he's saying, for I, the Lord, I'm sanctifying you and I am holy. I am doing this work. So you need to be made right. This standard, you need to be held at a higher standard because you will be dealing with these things that make the people holy that I'm going to use, that I'm going to use to sanctify them. Um, so just reiterating their responsibility and their, the standard that they are held, that they are held to. Um, then in verse 10, it says the priest who is the highest among his brothers. So now we're talking to the highest priest and, and him. It's when God gives, you know, um, when he calls you to position, that that's a high position. You know, we, it's, we, we can't take that lightly as the average person. If the Lord calls you to teach, you're held at a higher standard. If the Lord calls you to, to get married, you're held at that standard as a wife or as a husband. Um, you know, according to what the Lord calls you is is according to that, you know, the height of that standard, the height of our responsibility, the height of what's required from us. So he goes into the high priest and speaking even what is expected, expected of him. We see in verse 11, nor shall he approach any dead person nor defile himself even for his father and his mother. So he is not to even approach the body of his father or his mother. Um when they have died it's it, it's it's just speaking look i am putting this requirement giving you this responsibility putting this calling on your life that that god it is god over family in the most detailed of situations that that this is for real that that we ain't playing games that 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 I am holy and I am your God and what you will be dealing with and taking care of and, and the things that I am giving you, it's huge. It's a big deal. Don't take it lightly. But again, we have to remember that that high priest, that all these requirements are on, that God is requiring, expecting so much out of, 
that he's also choosing that high priest to be the only one, the only one to enter into his presence that will be able to go um, beyond the veil into the presence of God. So though we feel sometimes that it's heavy and, and it's weary and we cannot we can't measure up to what God's calling us to do. If he is calling you to great things, then he is drawing you in to great things. To the measure of what he's calling you to do is the measure of the blessing that he desires to pour upon you. Um, that's beautiful. That That is so encouraging, especially in those times where we feel like that calling is so intense and we just cannot keep up. We just cannot... Um, we cannot make it happen. Then it's just like, God, you got to do this. But we have to understand in those times that we've got to press on and we've got to persevere. Because if he's calling us to do something that is seemingly impossible, then the blessings that he has planned for us when we choose to be obedient and faithful in that calling, that that, that blessing, the measure of that blessing is, is so beyond what we can even imagine. Um, God is faithful in that and he sees us. He sees where we're at. He sees the difficulty, yet he sees the obedience. Again, we um, read in our last couple chapters and in our last video that it's not perfection that the Lord wants. It's not this, this, I'm awesome at what I do, so God's calling me. No, it's God's calling me because he desires to bless me and he is, is trusting that, that I will just move in obedience, even in my weakness, even in my, my feelings of insecurity and, and not feeling good enough, that, that if I move in obedience, that that's all, that's all God's after. And, and he'll see that if every step of my obedience, that there's a blessing that follows after that. And, and that's for real, and that's, the, that's, that's reality. That's the reality of God's faithfulness, of God just calling out and, and all he wants is our obedience. All he wants is for us to step out with our hearts trusting him and, and drawing to him in, in that obedience. So, um, so, so good. Um, okay, so then he just lays out more of these this standard for the, the Most High Priest. Um, it says in verse 13, He shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow or a divorced woman, or one who is profaned by harlotry. These he may not take, but rather he is to marry a virgin of his own people, so that he will not profane his offspring among his people. For I am the Lord who sanctifies him. Again, this obedience, this obedience will drive us in to um, being made holy. Ab absolutely. Like, Absolutely. In our imperfections, we can be obedient. And in our be obedience, it's in our obedience that we will be made holy because it is the Lord. It is the Lord who um, who sanctifies us. So, so good. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Going more into then, then following in those verses, it's talking about the high priest who has any defect. So if he is blind, if he is missing um, an arm, a broken foot, hunchback or dwarf, it says in verse 20, um, anyone who has any type of defect in being a priest. Um, it says even in his eye or eczema or scabs, or it says crushed testicles, any of these things, any defect at all. Um, it says in verse 21, no man among the descendants of Aaron, the priest who has a defect is to come near to offer the Lord's offerings by fire. Since he has a defect, he shall not come near to offer the food of his God. He may eat the food of his God, both of the most holy and of holy. Only he shall not go in to the veil or come near the altar because he has a defect so that he will not profane my sanctuaries for I am the Lord who sanctifies them that they are sanctified through this obedience and and um, this emphasis on being pure being with no defect with nothing wrong with no blemish with nothing and again not that he is wanting perfection but that he is emphasizing this that this is holy that he is holy and and in this time we see that for them to be made holy, it was all in what they would do and what they would not do and, and making them clean or unclean, that that would make them holy. And those in that, that sense of obedience in those, those details um, and those specific areas. And for us, you know, to be made holy 
how we are made holy is being in the presence of the Holy One, that we, that pre, that His presence is available to us. And that is what makes us um, holy. That brings about that sanctification, is that practice of being in His holiness, that obedience and resting in the Lord and being settled in His presence. And back here, or back in, in this time, it was that obedience in these areas and in, in these all the statutes and the commands, the ordinances of the Lord that he is speaking, that they were to hear, they were to listen and keep in their hearts and then do and walk in and live out. So that um, finishes up Leviticus 21. Moving into chapter 22, it starts saying, Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Tell Aaron and his sons to be careful with the holy gifts of the sons of Israel, which they dedicate to me, so as not to profane my holy name. I am the Lord. So again, talking to Aaron and his sons. So the, the most high priest and um, and the other priests doing the service in the temple. And they're saying, be careful that they are to be on guard. They are they are to be so for real and serious in, in making sure that they are clean, making sure that they are in um, absolute obedience when dealing with these offerings that the people are bringing so that they can give them and offer them to the Lord for the people. Um uh, just yeah, just talking about making sure they're clean when they dedicate these to the Lord. If they're not, then that person shall be cut off before me. It says in verse three, he says, "I am the Lord." Again, just speaking this, um, speaking this emphasis on this is who I am. Pay attention to who I am. I am holy. Um, in verse 9, jumping down, they shall therefore keep my charge so that they will not bear sin because of it and die thereby because they profane it. I am the Lord who sanctifies them, that they need to be aware of who is sanctifying and who is um, who is holy. Uh, jumping down to verse 16, and so cause them to bear punishment for guilt by eating their holy gifts, for I am the Lord who sanctifies them. We see this reoccurring phrase that he is the one who sanctifies them. And in the peace offering, so um, there's this this mention of the peace offering, and we see in, in and with the rules regarding the peace offering that when that is brought to the priest to offer up to the Lord, then they are able to eat that offering but in in the specific ways in um certain instructions with that but that not all offerings are able to be eaten eat eaten like that but with the peace offering so we see a little bit of that mentioned mentioned too um in verse 18 it says speak to aaron and to his sons and to all the sons of israel <coughs> so it changes from not only speaking to the priests now and how they offer up the gifts that the people bring. But now it's to everyone. So the whole congregation of Israel, including the priests and the high priests. Um, they go in and just talking instructions. Again, um, we saw in the last chapter about any defect in the priests. That they were not to come around the gifts, around the offerings. That they needed to be um, completely clean, completely perfect. No defect, nothing wrong with when they offered. And then we see in verse 20... Again, they're talking to the whole congregation now. Whatever has a defect, you shall not offer, for it will not be accepted for you, so that it's not to be brought, um, it's not to be offered anything if it has defect. And then it goes into this offering being um, perfect, being without blemish, being without fractured or with without scabs, without blind, without markings on it, um, that it is to be perfect, symbolizing this the perfection that needs to be brought that it has to be perfect so that that it has room that it gives space for sin to be put upon that only something perfect only in that can offer this um this redemption and and this salvation and make them make them right only in that perfection um Okay, jumping on, to, jumping down to verse 27. When an ox or a sheep or a goat is born, it shall remain seven days with its mother. So again, that's seven days, and that's completion. That nothing can be done. It cannot be offered up until after seven days. There is, there is this, this reoccurring um, um, idea, this reoccurring truth that that is seven days. That that is completion. This this necessity of seven days in this process of seven days, whether it be 
um, cl being cleansed or, or growing or, or learning or being cared for, nurtured, brought up, blooming, um, poured upon seven days, it says, with its mother for this, this new, this baby animal. And then it says, and from the eighth day on, it shall be accepted as a sacrifice of an offering, the eighth day. And that's so crazy cool thinking that, um, again, just what the Lord spoke to Abraham, that, that, um, the, at, at eight, um, that I'm, I'm sorry, the eight on the eighth day that, that, the child was to be circumcised, um, and and that whole idea of of when they reach that certain age, that circumcision, and that meaning that they belong to the Lord. And again, we have seven, and then eight, of course, willing to be brought and and ready to be offered and and given over to. Just so so cool with that whole seven, making sure that seventh day being of rest, that that be completion, that that shows this this perfect complete readiness to to give to be offered to surrender oneself um so so cool okay and then we'll finish up with this we'll jump down to 30 30 or 31 32 and 33 31 says so you shall keep my commandments and do them so not only keep them in our hearts but do them walk in them I am the Lord. You shall not profane my holy name, but I will be sanctified among the sons of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you, who brought you out from the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. Um, okay, I love this in verse 32, but I will be sanctified among the sons of Israel. So God said he will be sanctified. He will be um, he will be revered and seen and honored as who he is, as holy, because only a holy God is able to make us holy. We are sanctified because he is holy. So he is in position where we are to, to um, see, we are to acknowledge that he is holy, to revere him in his holiness. Again, because we cannot be made holy by someone who is not holy, by someone who is imperfect, by someone who is lacking. And God does, and he is all powerful, all knowing, perfect, holy, um, in every sense of the matter. So we can revere him. We see him as holy, knowing that in his holiness, he makes us holy. He sanctifies us because he is holy. He is the Lord who sanctifies us. He brought us up out of the land of Egypt, out of our bondage. He brought the Israelites up from that land to be brought to him in relationship with him so that he can sanctify them. And he brings us up out of our bondage. When we receive that that help when we're willing to accept that, when we're willing to see him and see him as holy and fully capable to help us. And we are seeking him. We are clinging to him. We are resting in him. He brings us up out of that. And not only just up out, but again, to him. We were made not to be free from sin, but but living freely in him, in and with our Lord, our um, our sanctifier our savior um so so good okay so rush through that there is so much in that but i encourage you to just go through again get more and more out let father just continue to speak to you and speak um just just hear him hear his voice calling us out and and drawing us in and keeping us just set apart and understanding our um our role our position in, in life and how and where God has called us for, for such a time as this. If he has called you to teach, if he has called you to, to speak, if he's called you to write, if he's called you to preach, if he's called you to, to write, if he's called you to, to mentor, if he's called you to be an encourager, whatever your role is, may we hear the voice of the Lord speaking um, specific instructions on what it looks like for us, specifically for us, and how the Holy Spirit is convicting us in our own personal lives as to what we are to do and how we are to do it and what we are to say no to and and every christian is supposed to look different from the world that we are to be set apart but but there are different callings where the lord may may call someone out 
a more deeper, a higher standard, more radically, um, more, more of a radical um, life of living, this normalcy looks completely different. And that being set apart, God just is so, He loves us all the same, but loves us so uniquely and meets us right where we're at. And, and the way that He meets me may look completely different from the way He meets you. So that is why it's so important to not just listen to a bunch of people speak and talk and walk you through the Word of God. What's important and, and the meat of all this, what the, the power in all of this is how you meet with the Lord. It's how you are opening yourself up to listen to the Lord speak to you and directly, directly to your heart and into your situation. May He continue to call you out and and speak so clearly in what He is calling you to do and how He is calling you to live. Um, I just pray that you open yourself up and hear Him speak. I pray that He is whispering your name into the depths of your heart and calling you out and drawing you in. So, so good. May we continue to live our lives set apart, um, being holy, practicing and rehearsing and walking in obedience that, that and understanding that that is what is making us, um, that's what makes us holy, is, is being settled in His holy presence and hearing His Holy Spirit speak to us and calling us and moving us in the specific places that He is calling us for such a time as this. Um, I'm going to end with that. Thank you so much for walking this out with me. So excited to continue walking and growing and just moving on this journey of, of really seeing who God is, allowing Him to just unveil um, His heart to us. So thank you again for walking this out with me, for um, for just joining me, that, joining me on this journey. Um, that is all I got. So blessings, blessings on you. I pray that God is glorified through through you, through your life, through the decisions you make, through the rest of the day. Um, I hope to see you very soon. Thanks again for joining me. See ya.